Welcome to Lab Labs. I'm Andy Walker. And I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, we're going to explore the wonderful world of drivers. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not talking about those kinds of drivers. I'm talking about software that helps your computer run peripherals. I know you're shaking your boots. You're like, yay, finally an episode on drivers. Well, we had to do it. What's a peripheral? What's a peripheral? You know what a peripheral is, Sean. I do. <laughs> I'm trying to find out if he can say it in 50 words or less. Uh, a peripheral is a device that is attached externally to a computer. OK. Not bad, huh? That's good. But you know what? Uh, we're not just talking about peripherals as well for drivers. Everything that's inside a computer that needs a driver as well. So. Add-ons, adapters, uh, uh, I don't know, cards, yeah, things like that. Anything that needs to communicate with the operating system in some fashion. Can you get a cat? Because I want to demonstrate something here. I can. Who's uh, available? Uh, I think we lost Boo. Lost Boo? Go wow. ahead. While uh, Sean's fetching the cat, I'm going to pretend that I am a copy of Windows on your operating system. Biff here always likes hanging out under the lights. I was going to see if I can mic up my microphone there. And then... Yeah, um, that, that sounded good, I bet. <laughs> and you're going, to be, you're going to be the hardware. So we'll stick that on here. And of course, oops, right on the mic. your mic as well. And the cat, which doesn't have a mic luckily, is going to be Biff the driver. <laughs> oh, Biff is going to love this. So we'll can only do this. Kind of duct tape onto the cat. There we go. And I'm just going to hold him for a second. You know, the people for the ethical treatment of animals are no, Biff likes currently... Uh, Iffy. Writing in. All right, so as you can see, the, the cat is between me, Windows, and Sean, the hardware, the CPU, and the uh, and the motherboard, and that sort of thing. And Biff is sort of the intermediary. He will he will basically interpret for uh, everything. Every time I need to talk to you, I talk to Biff first, and Biff kind of translates. Not that that's really going to help, but hopefully that illustrates the. Sorry, Biff. Sorry, buddy. The. Uh, <laughs> And if, well, what a driver exactly does is an intermediary. It's like an interpreter. You go to Poland, Poland uh, and you need to talk to the people in Warsaw. Well, you might want to hire an interpreter who will actually get your point across and actually get information back to you. And so what they'll do then is they'll take duct tape and a cat and... That's right, exactly. All right. But actually, let me, let me show you. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you real quick here what exactly a driver is because uh, it's actually not that complicated. People think, oh my god, it's, a, it's an algorithm. It's uh, all kinds of uh, complicated programming. It's not. It's a text file. That's all it is. Take that. And uh, so it's typically what we call an INF file. Yes. You'll find dozens and dozens of INF files on your hard drive. I'm going to open one up here on my machine. And as you can see here, it really is. It's just a text file with a lot of gobbled, gobbledygook in here. In this particular case, it's, a, it's an ATI uh, video driver. You're not going to be able to, be able to make a, a head or tail of it, but essentially it just provides instructions to Windows to help it get the best out of the hardware, you know, yeah. allow the hardware to work, allow the hardware to provide functions that it, that it natively pro uh, provides mm -hmm. to Windows and that sort of thing. Yeah, when you get a driver, you, you'll get um, something that has a whole pile of other uh, associated files with it. That's right. And uh, the, that driver file that you were looking at, the INF file, tells which files need to be called at what time. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Um, so let's, uh, with, without further ado, why would we want to update our drivers? I mean, why, you know, we get a set of drivers when we install uh, a program, so why would we want to change that if it's, if it's working just fine? Um, well, I'm, I'm of the opinion if something is working just fine and there's no new functionality to be added, yeah. maybe leave it alone. Right. But uh, in case that there is something that is new to the driver, you can update drivers because it adds functionality. Right. You can update drivers because it fixes a bug. Mm -hmm. You can update drivers for a number of reasons like that. Um, if you want to update it, either because you've got a buggy system, it keeps crashing whenever you access that particular piece of hardware. Right. I mean, you know, graphic graphic uh, video cards are, are uh, notorious for this. Right. Where you run into like video freezes or, or you get blue screens and all kinds of mm -hmm. things like this. Yeah. Typically, it's because the first generation driver is kind of buggy. Right, or even a second or third generation driver may be um, interacting very badly with another driver on your system. So right. if you update uh, something and, the, and other things starts crashing, then you might want to uh, you know, update one of those drivers. This would be like two, uh, two interpreters in a Warsaw trying to arguing over what uh, you know, the Warsawonian is trying to say to you, the tourist. Perhaps. Maybe a fish fight? I don't know. I mean, you could argue that, that perhaps that's a good analogy. Perhaps, or actually uh, taking that analogy a bit further, what might be happening is two of these translators are fighting for resources. So one of them is trying to get you to go to that tavern, and the other one is trying to get you to go to that tavern, and they both think that you've asked for the same thing, when in fact you've been asking for 
two different things. Interesting, yeah. There you go. So, so it's a great analogy. Right. All right, so, so what are the kinds of devices that we're going to update our drivers for? I mean, the, you know, video, obviously video cards come to mind immediately because they tend to be the most problematic, I find. Right, and there's always, uh, with games uh, being such a huge, huge industry these days, there's always ad added features being added into these uh, games in the cards. So, you know, you add a new feature to this, you want to update the driver. If uh, Microsoft updates DirectX, you might want to update the driver so that it can right. take advantage of that. Um, but that's not the only uh, driver on your system by all, by all means. There's, and one uh, of my favorites, I think, is chip the chipset. Right. Mean, people don't always necessarily think, oh, what nerfs a chipset, you know? But uh, what it is, is, I mean, you get a motherboard, and the motherboard is basically this big circuit board with all kinds of little devices, not just per peripherals, because peripherals are outboard. I got one. You've got one. I got one. It's hidden back here. Let's have a look at it. And okay. so essentially these, dev these devices are all attached to the motherboard, and each one needs, to, uh, needs, to, uh, needs its own unique driver. So show us where exactly uh, is our chipset here, Sean? Well, the chipset on this board is uh, hiding in behind here. So this is a microprocessor, is it? This is the processor right here. Right, okay. And this right here is the chipset. So the chipset, in this case the north bridge is what they call it, it uh, is what communicates between the processor and the RAM and all the other components. Right. Um, the, the north bridge will communicate between some of the components, and uh, the south bridge will communicate between other components in your system. Okay. So what you need is you need drivers uh, on a Windows system or a Macintosh, whatever. It any uh, system or any operating system needs drivers of some sort to communicate with the hardware. Mm -hmm. But uh, instead, you, you need something for this one to talk to, say, the PCI or the, the graphics component that's built in or the USB ports. Right. You know, whichever ones each of those has, each of those needs a driver in order to be understood properly. I mean, essentially, what you want to do is you want to go to the website that makes either the motherboard of the machine that you own, uh, if you bought like a white box, for example, a, a clone or the manufacturer of the computer that you have, like Dell or Compaq or HP or something along those lines, um, go into the driver section and look for, I mean, it's not always you know, incredibly obvious. No. Usually, sometimes it says chipset, and I actually have a, um, let's see if I can find one here. I think I have uh, one of these guys up. I think, oh, for Dell, for example. So I have a Dell uh, 3000, uh, Dimension 3000. Mm -hmm. And I typed in the service tag here um, that, uh, uh, it identifies the machine to the website, and it lists all, it's going to say, find downloads for Windows XP. And essentially what's going to happen is it'll, it'll list all of the different drivers that are available for that particular system. So there you go. We were talking about the variety. We've got uh, audio drivers, chipset, communications, which would be your uh, Ethernet or your wireless. You've right. got the display, which would be the, uh, the monitor, the VGA. Driver. There's like a ton of different things that motherboard has on it and uh, that uh, would come in your system that would be attached to the motherboard as an add-in card. But notice here, chipset. There is actually a chipset uh, update utility available from Intel for the, uh, the, the chipset on the Dell machine that I have. So that's worth downloading and installing uh, because the other thing that's wonderful about chipset updates is it also will, will solve some mysterious problems that you might be having with your system. If you get mm -hmm. frequent unexplainable blue screens and you've, you check your video driver, things like that, mm -hmm. and these things continue to happen, especially if the machine's relatively new. Mm -hmm. um, and look for the chipset up update because, uh, driver update, because that is probably going to solve many of the, those mysterious blue screens and, and crashes that you tend to have in Windows. That one will also uh, solve any USB problems you may be having. Oh, if, yeah. if, if the USB can be solved by the driver, that would be the one to get. Right, that's good. Anything else? I guess, I suppose, would, uh, I guess video adapters on the motherboard would be a separate driver. Right, so if you, um, this one right here doesn't actually have it built in, but often you'll find that your video card driver is built right into the the same brick of uh, connectors that you see here. Sometimes it's right here. If, it, if it's over here, typically, away from the other brick, then it's a separate thing, and you should probably go to the uh, manufacturer of the video card. If it's on here, then you can get it from the manufacturer of your computer of system computer. or the motherboard. Yeah. I mean, in this, in this case, I think, it, it, uh, see what we have it here, video drivers is, they are, they are separate even, because they're integrated mm -hmm. into that Dell. Right, and if you, if you get a system from one of the big manufacturers like IBM, uh, Lenovo, in this case Dell or HP, then you should be able to get every single driver that comes with that box out of the, you know, if you get a stock model. Now when you add things in yourself, like you uh, upgrade the video card, then you start having to go to the uh, manufacturer sites to get those. Right, right. So if you buy an, out buy an outboard in video card or an outboard ATI card, then obviously that's an add-on, right. so go to ATI.com or NVIDIA.com to get the drivers. And so if you've never added anything to the box, every single driver that you need should be available from that manufacturer's website. And this is kind of the maintenance, you know, part of the maintenance routine you should be doing every, what we say, every year, twice a year perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, some fastidious people will do it once a month. I think that's a bit of overkill because mm -hmm. they don't release drivers that often. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 
I, I, again, I said this off the top, if your system is working perfectly fine, don't worry about it until you have a problem, I would say, unless there's some major new feature that's being added to it, because you're more likely to bork something up and, and wreck your machine upgrading on a regular basis than you are just leaving it alone. Okay. <clears throat> now I want to take you to, uh, I'm going to go into the control panel here in, in Windows, I'm going to go down to the system uh, icon um, and have a look at where you can actually do your driver updates. Um, very often you'll download a, a driver package and just double click and run it and it will install all by itself. It's nothing further needed. But uh, often you're going to want to go into your hardware uh, tab here. Click on device manager. Are we having chaos back through with the cast? Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> and as you can see here, there's, uh, there's a whole list under this, the um, that device manager of all the different uh, you know, bits and pieces that are attached, the peripherals, the adapters, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to, and in this particular case, I have the Broadcom uh, giga, Gigabit Ethernet malfunctioning, you know, as a red X, X here. So I'm going to right click on that, and I'm going to choose properties, and I'm going to go to the driver. Um, it actually says it's, this driver is disabled at the moment. So I could actually enable this, the driver in this particular case. I think what's mm -hmm. happened here is I've uh, been messing around with Windows and caused the problem. So I could, I mean, in fact, let's do that right now. Let's see if we can uh, enable it. And we did. That's very simple. But um, what I might have had to do would be to click on the driver uh, tab here, look at the driver details. Now, uh, it doesn't tell me a whole lot about it. What she does here is it tells me the file version of the driver. Of course, it's set by uh, just like you know, there are versions one, two, three, and four for for um, software. Mm -hmm. These guys have version numbers as well. Um, so you may want to look at the file version uh, for the driver and compare it to the file version available on the website of your manufacturer to see if there's a newer version. You can also look at the date. Sometimes you'll have a, a, the date of issue. In this particular case, the driver date showing uh, the 20th of uh, April 2005. It's about a year old. It's about so a year old, too. Yeah, you might want to check to see if there's a newer one. If you're having any problems with uh, your Ethernet here, then yeah, it's worth taking a look. And, and some people have been asking me a lot, you know, I'm having trouble with Wi-Fi. Uh, more often than not, because it's a relatively new technology, I'm finding the driver fixes uh, often will solve, you know, those weird drops and things like that. I know it's Windows, and Windows is kind of funky with Wi-Fi anyway, but very often it's a driver issue. And, mm -hmm. of course, the other thing to do would be to look at the firmware on your, on your device, on your, uh, on your router. Right. But, but I find that driver updates, especially if you're running Centrino chipsets, which is uh, Wi-Fi, you know, integrated with the Pentium M, um, well, often that will, will solve yeah. a lot of the uh, Wi-Fi problems. And that's actually worth mentioning. If you do upgrade the firmware on your router, it might be worth looking at upgrading the driver on your system for the Wi-Fi at that point to make sure that they're talking well together. Because if you upgrade one but not the other, then uh, yeah, it may not work so well anymore. Right. Exactly. And finally, I think it's worth pointing out uh, before we go uh, that you can actually roll back. There's a rollback function here. Um, let's say you install a driver. Uh, it causes more problems than it fixes then you can click on this rollback driver and mm -hmm. it will allow you to uh, go back to the previous version yeah. that was installed. And you may have to do this from safe mode if you really cause a problem, but uh, that option is there. Right, and safe mode, for those that don't know about it, it's a raw Windows state, you can get into it, reboot, Windows in black, hit F8, 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 and uh, you'll, get a, you'll get a list and choose safe mode and you're gonna go mm -hmm. into that raw diagnostic yeah. mode for Windows. It may take a while, but... Uh after you start hitting F8, don't, don't panic, it'll okay. show up eventually. Yeah, exactly. The one thing I would say about drivers, um, the thing that uh, a lot of people don't think about until it's too late, and I've been guilty of this many, many times in the past, is if you're planning to reformat your hard drive and reinstall Windows, as we uh, often talk about mm -hmm. uh, in our field of uh, work, uh, you know, we want to roll things back. You know, it's been crunged up by a spiral, and you just want to get it back to a clean state. I think we're out of time. <laughs> Get the, <laughs> download the drivers first. <laughs> well, see, driver is more interesting than you possibly thought, right? I mean, uh, we're getting into today's issue, and Sean and I were like, oh, our drivers, how are we going to make this interesting? So hopefully you learned a few things today uh, and enjoyed this episode. As always, we'd love to hear back from you uh, via email. Feedback at labrats.tv is our email address. Um, we, uh, we'd like to send people to our forums, of mm -hmm. course. Take a lot of does a great job as our form master. So, uh, it's at labrats.tv slash forms, I think. Was it forms.labrats.tv? I'm not sure which. Yeah, slash forms. Slash forms. There you go. Um, any other uh, housekeeping notes other than um, goodbye from Biff? And yeah. Luke? I think that's about it. That's it. All right. Well, thanks for uh, downloading us. We'll see you next time. I'm Eddie Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Take care. Are you ready?
Hi, uh, welcome to Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. Okay, good. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, we're going to be talking about the world of drivers. Now, if you don't know exactly what a driver is, then uh, chances are you've used one. In fact, you have, because if you've ever touched a computer, a computer relies on drivers to function. Is so, that true? Hmm? Is that right? It's absolutely right. Um, you can Why? Think, think in terms of uh, a driver as an interpreter. You know, you go to a foreign country, you go to Poland, for example. I've never been to Poland. What's that? I've never been to Poland. No, you haven't been to Poland, but you've uh, used a driver before. Work with me here, Sean. Uh, and so essentially what it works is like an interpreter.